The Philadelphia Eagles, for the third year in a row, take their first pick on day two and spend it on an offensive lineman. We are here to talk about Alabama offensive tackle slash guard Tyler Steen. He follows a trend here with the Philadelphia Eagles. We've seen them do this with, you know, 2022 with Cam Jurgens in round two. 2021 in round two, they spent a pick on, on Landon Dickerson. And even if you expand this out to 10 years, if you look at the last 10 draft classes, there was actually a fourth example of the first pick on day two being an offensive lineman. That was 2016 in Isaac Sayamalu. The young man we are now attempting to replace at right guard. So without further ado, guys, I want to take some time and I want to look into Tyler Steen. I want to go over some of the things that I saw on film about this young man. And if you know me, you know that I'm going to give you an open and honest assessment of what the film shows about this young man, both the positives and the negatives. All right, y'all, let's get into this one. What's up, Cerebral Football fans? My name is Steven Heider. This is Gate City Sports Channel. As I said, Tyler Steen, you know, kind of keeps this motion going forward in the last three draft classes on day two. There's one thing you can count on is that old Howie Roseman is going to pluck him an offensive lineman. This name was interesting because if we're being honest, or at least if I'm being honest, I got kind of concerned at the end of round two because you started seeing those offensive linemen started rolling off the board. You know, Peter Bergeron went really, really high. You know, Cody Mock. A lot of these dudes started really coming off the board. I was like, hmm. But then we kind of got to the point where we were sitting there and I thought the Eagles would probably trade back one of those two picks that they had. And they ended up did trading back one of those picks. And I was like, okay, like, you know, there's still some names on the board. But I'll be honest with you, Tyler Steen really wasn't on my radar. But it it, it taught me a couple of things about how the Eagles were viewing this draft class, which is number one, I think that when you look at the case of Tyler Steen, they said the young man has played in the SEC for a very long time, you know, being in Vanderbilt first and then transferring over to Alabama. But number two, we value the organization. We value Alabama. We know that those dudes produce offensive linemen. And I'm going to take a hunch here, guys, that they probably really like Jameer Gibbs a lot. They probably were watching Jameer Gibbs' film, and I bet you they came to the same conclusion I came to, which is, dude, that lo- that left side is really opening up some lanes here in the run game. Like, I mean, this guy's basically walking into the end zone untouched off the left side here. Like, let's maybe take a look at these offensive linemen here on this side and see what's going on. I think that's when maybe Tyler Steen crossed the radar. All right, what is Tyler Steen in terms of height, weight, profile? Six foot six, 321 pounds with 10 and a quarter inch hands. Big man. This is a big dude. If you want to size protect your center, if you're moving him over to right guard, theoretically, he gives you the size protection, no doubt about it. He also has the height, weight, and the hand size that you would expect of an offensive tackle, but it gets complex. Just hang in there, guys. 32 and three quarter inch arm reach and an 80 and a half inch wingspan. So, the only thing that you're really going to knock him for here is the 32 and three quarter inch arm reach. That's a little short. It's a little um, Andre Dillardish, if I'm being honest. But what I will say on film with this young man is there were moments, and, and I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to sit here and, and tell you something that's not true. It was not consistent. But there were moments on the film that you could watch this young man and you could see, oh, wow, like he's really athletic with the footwork. Like his footwork is pretty dang good. When everything is in sync. Now that's that's a big that's a big word there, guys, to, to say the the truth about it, guys, because it's not it's not like he was always in sync. It's not like he was always doing his footwork properly. But when he was, when he was doing what he was supposed to do, you could see the athleticism take over with this young man. And the first thing I'll say here is you gotta be a little careful with big men like this, these larger guys with shorter arms that tend to as Greg Cosell put it, bend at the waist, but what most people say is they're overextending or they're basically they're reaching, okay? So you bend at the waist, you're showing your hands, you're moving your hands out in front of your body, you're going to lose proper positioning. There was a, a play when I was doing my uh, analysis of this young man to where in the Tennessee game, I caught him getting, you know, he got put in that 90 degree angle, man, which for an offensive lineman is never a place of comfort. You never want to be put in that 90 degree angle. That's not good. You want to be able to sit down on those bull rushes. You do not want to be turned into a 90-degree angle, to be quite honest. With that said, I mean, this dude in the run game, there's potential here. I'm not going to oversell him because, I'll be honest, I don't. I think that he's a good athlete. I don't think he's exceptional. I think if you're playing a gap over, you can, you can feel pretty good about this guy. This guy can come through on a gap over for you. Now, 
He's strong, man. If I had to give you what this dude, you know, his attribute is, is he's got incredible play strength. This is a very, very strong, pro, you know, prospect. And you can see that on the fact that, like, yeah, I mean, I don't know how much bench press reps are a great indicator of this. But, I mean, he did put up 31 of those bad boys. I mean, the dude's strong, man. He had a 29.5-inch vertical and 109-inch broad jump. You know, 4.59 short shuttle and a 7.78 three cone. From the athletic testing standpoint, the young man did show you, he showed you a little bit, like, oh, man, like, I might be a little tight. You know, I may not be the most fluid of movers, but I can move. Like, I move pretty well in terms of the testing. He doesn't always stay engaged, and he will miss the strike at the second level. That is something that I did notice on this film is that he did have a tendency to miss at the second level. I'm going to be real honest about it. With that said, you could just see him move people off the ball. And I always think it's a good idea to be able to filter for game situations to see what they're doing. There's one third and short situation to where they ran off the right side. And I was like, oh, man, I thought they would have gone off the left side just judging from what I see on the film. But then they give you a close-up view of, of the run play. And lo and behold, who's playing on the right side for that particular play? Who are they running off of? They're running off of Tyler Steen, and that says something, right? It's, it's about Sometimes it's about the way that you can tell from the film that they're using the guy. That tells you a lot about what they think about him. Uh, and then when we're talking about lateral movement drills, make no mistake about it, guys. Whether we're talking about gap schemes, outside zone schemes, stretch plays, what you're talking about is playing in space. Just simplify it to say playing in space. And there were definitely some moments on his film to where maybe he wasn't the cleanest out there, but there was a reliance on him to play in space, which would lead you to believe that if you give the young man an opportunity and you get him underneath the right coaching, there's definitely some underlying athleticism here to say, like, we can clean this up. We can get this guy to be much better playing in space than what he showed on the college film. And I think that's what they're looking at here, if I'm being honest with the young man, is that the athletic traits then the size, the play strength, I think that just made him go like, you know, hey, man, maybe some of the guys we might have had rated above him came off the board, but uh, you got an Alabama prospect who really, really shined at the Senior Bowl, and we value how you play against, you know, in, inside these bowl games. So we got, we have the SEC, and we have Alabama. We have really, really good production at the guard spot inside of the Senior Bowl, and then we got enough things on tape to feel pretty confident in your ability to develop. It ain't a polished product. It's certainly not a finished product. It's certainly probably... Uh, there was probably definitely a lot of guys higher on their board, if I'm going to be real with this, guys. But this is a good signing, man. This is a really, really good draft pick. Like, this is where Howie Roseman, I think, is, is really special at this, is he doesn't panic. These guys do their job in terms of the scouting world. They do their jobs in terms of studying the programs and knowing which programs produce these guys. And they just keep their cool. They keep their cool about themselves, and they end up identifying these dudes, which is it's a special talent in itself, to be honest with you. 46 career starts, guys. He's got a lot of playing experience. 34 at left tackle, 12 at right tackle, and then in the senior bowl, they kicked him in inside a guard, and he did pretty dang well. An experienced young man that knows how to play the position, a guy that has some potential upside as an athlete, if you can get him to you know, get the technique down. I like this. I like this pick a lot, guys. I think this is a, uh, a very interesting guy. There's concerns. Like I said, he's a little bit of a waste bender. I don't think he stays engaged with his blocks the best in the world. I don't think he works his way up to the second level in terms of finding and striking someone very well. But what he is is a space mover. He's strong. That, I'm going to be real with you guys, that play strength is for real. This dude is a strong young man. And he can move some bodies for you in the run game. That's for sure. And he's got some things to, to feel confident about, especially being kicked inside in terms of pass protection. So with that said, hey, I mean, we'll see how this works out, guys. I mean, if anyone deserves uh, the benefit of the doubt, it's Jeff Statlin and Howie Roseman when it comes to offensive linemen. I, in my opinion, yes, that you know you don't always hit home runs there. We've had some misses, but I'm gonna be real with you, man. The, the the rate at which we hit on these picks when it comes to the offensive line, I feel pretty confident, man. Even if something doesn't work out with a player, I feel pretty confident that another one's coming down the board and they'll find him, they'll identify him, and and they'll coach him up and he'll be okay. So, yeah, I mean, I guess in Jeff Statlin we trust, in Howie we trust. I mean, that, that is somewhat to this evaluation. There's no doubt about it. There's no doubt about that. I'm not going to hide that. All right, guys, I appreciate y'all so much. Leave your comments down below, and uh, I'll catch y'all on the next video.